Yes, of course, I like to have a beer or to have a glass of wine or to have a good juice. But generally, I drink water. I drink just plain water from the tap. And I like to drink that water and I li would like to drink that water also in India. Water is a fundamental requirement for most life on Earth, and humans are no exception. As the human population on Earth grows larger, so does our impact on our natural water supplies. This demands that more effort be made to ensure that water resources be protected and more attention is focused on water quality. Earlier it was very common practice, you know, to before entering into the Ganga for bathing purposes, you know, you just take little bit of water in your hand and sip it like this, you know, and then sprinkle it like this as though you are purifying yourself. These are some of the common practices. But with increasing population, with increasing awareness, with increasing uh, industrialization, with increasing pollution, you know, these things have sort of vanished now, you know. Everybody has become a little bit skeptical, you know. Uttarakhand, India. This small North Indian state is located in an area of the world known to the local people as the Land of the Gods, home to the Himalayas, highest mountains on Earth. But it is here also that some of the most important rivers in the world first begin, playing a central role in the lives of the people who are settled along their banks. Uh, Uttarakhand is named as the Land of Gods, but uh, as a drinking water engineer, I can say Uttarakhand is a land of rivers. Uttarakhand is the birthplace of the Ganga, holiest of all rivers in India, but it and its many tributaries also serve as a primary source of drinking water for millions of people that live along the river. People generally prefer to take uh, river water. Even now, particularly with the Ganga, you know, this Ganga water is considered to be very sort of a sacred water and uh, it's supposed to be a lifeline of millions of people, of course. For religious festivals like the Kumbh Mela, which last took place in Hardwar in 2010, people travel from all over India to bathe in the Ganga, putting significant strain on the water supply infrastructure. The satellite counted nearly 1.7 million heads on a single day, that is 14th of April, in Haridwar. So you can imagine the density of the crowd on a particular day. The people of Uttarakhand also face climatic, geologic, and infrastructural obstacles to ensuring clean and plentiful drinking water. So the major problem here is of sustainability. Most of the time, in summers, our sources are depleted, drying up. The sustainability problem is also here because in the time of heavy rains, uh, the um, water is very high turbid, that is around seven to eight thousand NTU, um, what turbidity is on the very high side. Roads are blocked in the rainy season uh, due to the landslides and erosions and due to the heavy rainfalls. Every year we are finding that so many roads are closed and so many roads are not working. There is a problem with the state electricity power network. The power network is very poor in India and particularly in rural areas it is uh, very very poor. These power network faults create a problem in the system also. Lot of landslides occur, lot of cloudbursts occur, the terrain is hilly and uh, very difficult to control the quality of work. The water sources are there but then treatment facility providing to the villages is very costly and uh, difficult to maintain also. And so, Uttarakhand, in need of safe, sustainable, and affordable means of supplying drinking water to its inhabitants, riverbank filtration, or RBF, has emerged as an increasingly popular natural treatment and production technique. Here we see a cross-section view of a typical gaining river and its bank. Under normal circumstances, groundwater flows from both sides of the river into the river channel, and the river gains in flow as it progresses downstream. Now we introduce a well, designed for the production of drinking water, equipped with a filter screen to hold soil out and allow water in. As water is pumped out of the well at a constant rate, the water level in the aquifer is drawn down over a period of time until it eventually reaches a steady state level. This newly created condition also leads to a change in the flow pattern of the river aquifer system. We have now achieved riverbank filtration, or RBF. 
surface water is drawn from the river into the well by way of the aquifer, becoming what we call bank filtrate. At the same time, groundwater is drawn in from the land side of the well, and possibly also from the deep aquifer on the opposite side of the river. Here we see one important way in which the pumped water quality is improved, by mixing as the bank filtrate combines with normally high quality groundwater at the production well. The other important improvement step occurs as the bank filtrate flows through the aquifer soil from the river to the well. Here, a variety of physical and chemical processes take place, including filtration, biodegradation, adsorption, chemical precipitation, and redox reactions. Taken together, these processes produce a substantial net improvement in water quality for human consumption, for example, by effectively reducing or removing turbidity, microbial pathogens, and other contaminants. Bank filtration, which has been used for more than 140 years in, in Europe and especially in Germany, is a very cost-efficient method and it has a natural, natural treatment step. So it is of high value for countries which cannot afford the more sophisticated treatment and it is a, has very good advantages compared to surface water abstraction. And uh, that's why we, we think that this technology, which is very simple to apply, um, is very is of high value for other countries, for example for India. When we went to India, it was interesting to see that they have already some places where they use bank food trade, but maybe not in the in the in the op optimal way. So it it was an it was interesting to to think about optimization of existing sites and to motivate the people to think about new sites. Somewhere around March 2004, so that was when Professor Kreshek was invited to, um, by Professor Chetranjan Ray and Professor Oja, he was invited to, uh, the uh, to the Indian Institute of Technology in Rootki to uh, participate in a workshop, an international workshop on river bank filtration. HTW, Dresden, and a uh, few universities of, the, uh, of India, they were Banaras Hindu University, then what agency from Patna, IIT Rurki, NIH, they formed a uh, network called uh, EU India River Bank Filtration Network. The um, German uh, counterpart, Professor Geschick and uh, Dr. Sandhu uh, interacted here. As a team, Justice Tan, myself, we went uh, to the University of Dresden, uh, in the University of Applied Sciences Dresden, I would say. And uh, this is how they, you know, <clears throat> we came uh, closer to each other. The Jalsastan, DST partners, the uh, U University and the uh, UCOST. NIH and the uh, STWD German uh, signed a memorandum of understanding and uh, finally we, we, we got a center established at NIH. So that is the basis of uh, actually uh, involving NIH to the river bank filtration activities. Dr. Ojha from this department, he was the coordinator from Indian side. So we had that project, in connection with that project, many academicians and the professionals came from Germany. We also visited a number of times Germany and learned many things. It has uh, been a great learning platform for me. There were certain things which we knew, but we had not really thought of it, you know, so much. It was not under the umbrella of RBF, though the process was well known, you know. In 2010, Uttarakhand Jalsanstan, the state organization responsible for maintaining the water supply network, received funding from the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, to undertake a project aimed at developing RBF in the hill regions of Uttarakhand. This led to the creation of four new RBF sites for drinking water production. The town of Satpuli, home to about 8,000 people, is located on a narrow valley on a tributary to the Aliknanda River. Before the RBF well was installed, water was piped in from an upstream surface water source ranging from 250 to as low as 50 liters per minute. That's about 72,000 liters in one day, but not without occasional interruption. The new well provides about 10 times that and is able to supply water year-round. Further north, situated on the south side of a wide valley bend of the Aliknanda River, is the larger city of Srinagar, 
home to about 30,000 people. Here, five new RBF wells have been drilled with the intention of supplementing the water supply, currently based on surface water taken directly from the Aliknanda. Here, a well is being prepared for use as the drilling mud is forced out with compressed air until the water runs clear. Here, and at many other water supply sites, automation equipment has been installed to enable both more reliable and remote operation of the pumps that lift the water out of the wells. East of Srinagar along the Aliknanda is the town of Karnaprayag, population about 8,500. Currently, the water supply is based on several springs and streams located high in the hills above the town. However, a constant challenge remains the inconsistency of the water sources, which can run dry in the summer and risk damaging the water pipelines during the monsoon. To provide a more reliable source of water, RBF wells are being installed beside the Aliknanda, about 6 kilometers upstream, and pipelines laid to carry the water to the town. About midway between Srinagar and Karnaprayag on the Mandakini River, tributary to the Aliknanda, lies the town of Agasmuni, home to about 5,500 people. The water supply here is also based on high-altitude streams, and RBF wells are being drilled to improve the consistency of the supply, and eventually to supply water to towns downstream. Luckily, in India, particularly in Uttarakhand, we don't have very much contaminated rivers. Only the contamination is coliforms, that is total coliform and fecal coliforms. And uh, riverbank filtration is a good method, good natural process by means of which without spending even a single penny where the water can be filtered. You don't have to have any of these alum, chemical requirement is not there, disposal of uh, alum sludge is not there. So these things are really, I mean, it's a great uh, advantage, you know, with the uh, RBF. By adopting this RBF, uh, you have free from any burden, you have free from any uh, problem because uh, your system is sustainable, uh, you are getting good quality and quantity of water. And in, in, in every season of the year, every season of the there is no problem in whether it is summer, whether it is winter, whether it is rainy season, there is no problem with the RPF. It is a sustainable source and we are uh, getting regular uh, and 24 hour supply from this source. This method is very good and very cheap. One benefit of the collaboration between the University of Applied Sciences Dresden and Partners in India has been the exchange of students. Every year since 2006, several German students spent a semester doing project work with Uttarakhand Jalsanstan at sites around Uttarakhand. Last several years, the students from the University of Applied Sciences Dresden comes to our place and they work with us. And they, that is very good experience for my department and particularly myself. And it has brought benefit to the HDW, definitely at least to the students, for instance, because for them it's a very good experience. It builds their self-confidence a lot. Several students from the Indian Institute of Technology in Warki also had the opportunity to travel to Dresden to perform lab and field work and learn from Professor Grishik and his team. To travel to a different country is always an advantage. On to that, what I learned there was also a you know, a push up to my my thinking about research. I went to the Germany. I met with Mr. Sandhu and Dr. Guru here also because they were here for some uh, days ago, and uh, it was really very nice experience to work with the group. I worked in Germany with them. So far, Indo-German collaboration on riverbank filtration projects in India has been a successful process. Uh, Professor Thomas Gresik, he is so affectionate to us and he is so uh, humble to us that he has given such a raise and he is continuously working with us and he is giving us the proper direction. Not only I am getting personally benefited but my department has also got very useful uh, knowledge from them. My husband and I, we both visited Dresden. The way we were looked after, you know, we were really delighted about the whole thing, you know, this cooperation. It's like a big family meanwhile and so we, I'm looking forward to have this family a very long time and I know that we have good friends in India. 
As of March 2012, the collaboration continues in full swing, with multiple projects aimed at both expanding the use of RBF and related water treatment technologies, and also working towards expanding the use of renewable energies, which have great potential for providing cleaner power in Utsutakan, helping to make incredible India's future even brighter.